Hello again, it's Bill Doggett, an African-American performing arts historian and early sound archivist dedicated to the showcasing and preservation of the African-American presence in early recorded sound. We are returning to the Black Swan label in this new edition. In previous editions, we had talked about the importance of the Black Swan label and its founder, Harry Pace, an African-American entrepreneur at the dawn of the Harlem Renaissance who had the vision the entrepreneurial vision to create a record label. He is the first African-American in the 20th century to create a record label for the documentation of emerging and outstanding black talent at the dawn of the Harlem Renaissance. Today we're looking at the important historic soprano Hattie King Revis. Like Revela Hughes, another soprano who came to the attention of Harry Pace, Hattie King Revis is a classically trained soprano, a concert singer, an opera singer, who arrives in the 1920s but is impacted, like Revella Hughes, by the color bar, the limiting opportunity for colored singers to be able to make a living in a career in classical music. However, Hattie King Revis was very involved, like Revella Hughes, in African-American composer circles, and in this particular case has showcased the wonderful rendition, the arrangement of a spiritual called I'm So Glad Troubles Don't Last Always, set by the very famous and important early 20th century African-American, actually Canadian, African composer in Nathaniel Dett. In this recording, one of the signature recordings of what was called the Concert Black Swan series, the Red Label Black Swans that were expressly a showcase of more of the classical oriented material that Mr. Hay, Mr. Pace uh, chose to record. In this particular recording, she's accompanied by the Black Swan Symphony Orchestra, an orchestra made up of all African-American classically trained musicians. It is conducted by his music director, who was the young composer William Grant Still. Let's take a listen.
As this recording closes, I want to add a couple of items of contextualization that are important to understanding the history of these early soprano concert singers working at the dawn of recorded sound, in particular uh, in Harlem at the dawn of the Harlem Renaissance. Hattie King Revis, like Reveille Hughes, was classically trained. However, because of the color bar, she was not able to make a career in classical music. This is a full decade before careers were possible in classical music through the agency of George Gershwin's 1935 Porgy and Bess, which showcased uh, so, so the unknown soprano at that time, and Brown. However, Hattie King Revis, as well as Revella Hughes, the other soprano that we've already sampled, were well known in the Harlem black music circles, and both were offered opportunities on the Broadway stage. In the case of Hattie King Revis, she was famously involved with a 1925 all-black musical called Chocolate Dandies, and then was featured in the 1932 revival of the 1927 Broadway hit Showboat. Hattie King Revis would also tour to Vienna in the early 30s in the revival there of Showboat as well. So it's interesting to see the opportunities that were possible but yet not possible for talented and gifted singers of color at the dawn of recorded sound and specifically uh, those limited by the color bar. Yet it is wonderful that an African-American entrepreneur by the name of Harry Pace had the idea to create a record label to give these promising singers an opportunity to be documented. They, Hattie King Revis and Revella Hughes, are inspired by the legacy of the great soprano who came before them, essentially, the great Cicerita Jones. It is wonderful to have this opportunity to share my archive with you. And if you enjoyed what you're hearing, I actually do visiting, traveling, PowerPoint presentations on this subject. So keep that in mind.